This is the launch of Apollo 11, July 16, 1969. It's camera E8, which shows the base of the Saturn V vehicle. It's done on 16 millimeter film at 500 frames per second. Now, this particular camera was started at five seconds prior to liftoff. Now, at this speed, what you're going to see in this full eight minutes and 22 seconds is about 30 seconds worth of actual time. Here, ignition sequence start is already started, and the kerosene and liquid oxygen is mixing. The, the F1 engines were started by bursting a hypergolic cartridge, which spun up the turbines to start driving the propellants into the engine. Now you're seeing that liquid oxygen and kerosene mixing and billowing up in the initial stage of starting up those engines. Now, when it reached full thrust and started to get thrust from those five engines, seven and a half million pounds, you see how it sucks all the material back down underneath the vehicle. And that was because now all of that material is going at a tremendous speed and being pushed out into the flame trench and it just sucks all of that all, all of that material back down. On, on the right you see two tail service masts. There's a third one on the other side of the vehicle and around the vehicle you also see four hold down arms. Now the vehicle sat on those hold down arms. And there was a mechanism inside there that held it onto the launch pad until liftoff. At T minus zero, those would release after they got the proper signal from the engines that all five engines were running properly. It would release, and as soon as it released, those tail service arms would move, and all the mechanisms would go up into a hood underneath those hoods so that they would be protected from the... Uh, from the exhaust of the engines. You see ice coming down now off the vehicle. You know that the space shuttle is real concerned about um, debris coming off the external tank, which is insulated. And the reason for that is the thermal protection system on the space shuttle, which sits on the side, is, is very delicate and can't be hit by that much. But the Saturn V had no such problem. So the Saturn V's liquid oxygen tank on the first stage wasn't insulated, so you get a lot of ice coming off of it when it hits the vibration. Now you see liftoff has happened, the tail service masts are pulling back up into the hoods, the uh, F1 engines are coming up, and you see that dark band of gas that's coming out of those engines all around, and then you'll see it get to the really bright part. Now that cool gas, it's cooler gas is the reason it's dark, that's coming from the turbine exhaust, and the turbine exhaust is put around, is dumped into the engine around the inside of that nozzle so it would be cooler and would act as something of an insulator on that nozzle extension so it wouldn't get too hot. That central gas is what's coming out of the engine injector where the liquid oxygen and the uh, kerosene is being mixed um, uh, together coming out of that injector. Now on the tail service mast and on the hold down arms, in fact even over here on the left hand side in the corner of the tower, you see a white material, whitish material that, that it's painted. That is actually a, a, a material that was designed to burn and char. In trying to protect this material so that the, the, the launch installation so that it would get a minimum of damage from a Saturn V launch, they painted these, these uh, particular tail service masts and hold down arm covers and the corners of this tower with this ablative uh, kind of paint and this material was designed to burn and char so that it would burn and the underlying material would be insulated and stay safe. You'll see that happening in just a moment. Now you're seeing that the water deluge system has definitely been activated and you're seeing a lot of that flash into steam and come up against the quartz mirror that the uh, the camera is, is uh, housed in. Now Remember I was talking about that white material. It's a flame now as it's getting hit by the uh, engine exhaust. Um, and it was designed to do that. You'll see it's already starting to char. You see the third uh, tail service mast over on the other side. There were three total. And you see at least three of the four hold down arms. Uh, you see the hoods now on the hold down arms have closed over. So they're protecting that mechanism that held the vehicle down. And you see that all of that material that's in the exhaust is now a fire on its own. Now look how instantaneously all of the water that's dumped into this area, and there was a lot of water dumped into this area, is instantly flashing to steam. It's very, very hot there right now. And as that tower over here on the left, you see it's starting to burn as well. So you're starting to get uh, enormous heat coming off of it. In fact, it, it, there are some cameras where you'll get a view of these launches and the grass around the pad Typically, you would have a number of grass fires right around the pad because the heat would move all the way off of the pad to a, to a high enough degree to light uh, a good deal of the grass around the launch pad. There are usually several grass fires that you see after on some of these cameras. Now you see that white material really uh, burning now, including over here on the tower. You see the water deluge system is full on. Um, 
at this point, the, the uh, vehicle would have cleared the tower, but the exhaust from those five F1 engines was long enough to still be impinging on the launch pad, and even at this point. Um, all of the white uh, area you see, which is a flame, uh, is that char material. Uh, there's an enormous amount of water being poured down into the flame trench and in, down through the hole, as well as you see some nozzles here on the base of the mobile launcher that are dumping water right onto the mobile launcher. And at this point, there's also water coming from above in order to shield that tower. So there is an awful lot of water coming down on, onto the pad now. Now you'll start to see a lot of this water and debris as the vehicle has moved away, start to swirl around, some of it getting on the quartz window of the camera. Uh, you're seeing the, the burning of the uh, uh, insulation material start to, to, to go away. And you're also seeing a good deal of, um, of the steam coming off that's not being blown away the way it was by the exhaust. And you're getting a better idea of just how much water is being dumped onto this. And still, it's so hot that it's flashing a good bit of it into steam. Now, pretty much all of the char is done. Uh, there's no longer impingement going on from the vehicle. The vehicle has moved up away from the tower and has started its trajectory out over the ocean. You still see a good bit of debris uh, occurring. Now this this launch happened at 9.32 in the morning, so it's really pretty bright here, but the camera exposure was set so as to to be able to see as much detail as it could while the engines were were being started and moving up. So it starts to get a little bit darker after the engines are out. And you're starting to see a lot more of the water coming down on top of the window in the housing. So this was the launch of Apollo 11, the first manned lunar landing from the corner of the uh, tower on the mobile launch platform.